So this is really about a day where we're celebrating not only the fact that there are mothers who are raising children, but it's about celebrating the idea that there is a divine feminine within each and every person. And when we awaken that, we awaken to that power that is within us. And so I said, so what lessons might the divine feminine want to give us and make us more aware of on this day? Because your mother would have taught you, brush your teeth every day, be five minutes early, that type of thing. That's the human mother. But I really want to focus on this idea of a divine mother a divine presence, something that is within us, but is so much more than us. And so I came to four lessons of life. And I thought that this is really where I wanted to focus my talk today and what I wanted to say to you. And that is, the first one is the greatest lesson of all, and that is love. And yesterday we had an all-day workshop, and as we were doing the all-day workshop, it really became clear, someone wanted to know, what was your definition, Lee? What is your definition of love? Because that's a nebulous term. It's something that we've been given all of these ideas to. We've made it something very romantic. And it really has no romance in it whatsoever. Romance is, is the, um, it's the hormones within a man and a woman that when there's a certain chemistry that comes up, that all of a sudden there's this magnetic draw and you are just, huh, got to be with them. But that's not love. That's hormones. See, there's a difference between love and hormones. Now, let's make this clear. When I got married in the Middle Ages, <laughs> I got married for hormones. <laughs> because I didn't know what love was. I had no idea what love was. So I've been, I can remember being in Unity Village in 1998 at a retreat, and it was about a love retreat. And Jean and I were there, and they were talking about love. And I walked out of that retreat, and I said, I'm as confused as ever. I never understood. They kept saying love, they kept saying love, they kept saying love, but they never used any other words to break down what does love mean. And so I've come to this. This is my definition. My definition that you take the word love, and you take it, and you trans plant the word accept. So when I look at someone and I can look at anyone and say I love you, it means I accept you just as you are. I'm not trying to change you. I'm not trying to make you a better person. I'm not trying to have you see it my way. I'm going to accept you as you are and I'm going to know that there's an infinite power, an infinite presence. You can call it God. You can call it the Christ. You can call it the Buddha nature. Call it George. Call it Harry. Call it Susan. Call it anything you want, but realize that there's a power within you that is unlimited, and it's a desire to experience and express more that it only can experience through you because in your uniqueness, you bring a gift to the world that no one else can bring. And so all the world is ever waiting to do is to see you bring that uniqueness that is you and expand into the world. And so when I love someone, I accept them where they are, knowing that this infinite power is in them, and I support them as they raise themselves up to a higher expression of themselves. Now, on top of that, I want you to know this. Love and like are different terms. Do we get that? You can meet someone and you can love them. You can accept them. You can see the higher power. You can see the potentials there. Doesn't mean you gotta like them. Because let's just be honest about that. People are all vibrating at different frequencies. We are energy, is that not right? Science has proven we are energy. And energy has a frequency, and every human being has a different frequency. The humans that get along tend to have a frequency that's somewhat overlapping. It's, for example, I'll use my father and I. It's a great example. My father is 90 and a half years of age. Right now, he's in the hospital in Maui. He's lost his mental faculties. He's got all sorts of health issues. He doesn't really know where he is. Are we on any form of frequency that we're vibrating the same? No. But he's my father, and I care about him. 
Let me rephrase that. I'm caring toward him, but I don't care about him. Caring means I'm monitoring what his progress is in the hospital. I'm taking care of making sure all that is necessary for him to be comfortable. I'm making sure that when he leaves, he's got all the care lined up in the assisting living center. I'm making sure that he's got new hearing aids because his old ones broke. I'm making sure that he's got a new cell phone because somehow he lost his cell phone. I'm making sure of all that. So I'm being caring. But I cannot care about his end result because that's his responsibility, not mine. This is a very difficult concept to understand as a mother and a father or a husband and a wife or someone that you care about something. You cannot care about the end result that someone has because it's their choice. You have no power over it. If you have no power over something, then you can't care. But you can be caring and supportive of them in their journey. Am I making clear on that? So there's a real difference between the idea of being a caring person and I care about the end result. When you care about the end result, you're coming out of unconditional love. And let me break that down again. There is no such thing as unconditional love. There is only love. The second you put a condition on something, love no longer exists. Is that clear? So many times we want to we play with that word and we want to say that I love you if you do this. No, that is not love. You're saying to that person, you'll better fit into my life if you do it my way. You hear that? That's not loving. That's why most relationships fail. Because in order for a relationship to succeed in today's world, you have to meet my expectations. That never works. When we talk about the idea of love, we're talking about coming together in union to support and grow each other in all relationships. Now, I'm blessed that my partner, Jean, and I have developed that understanding, and we have been living that for about the last 12 years. It wasn't always that way. We had the traditional type of marriage that went up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Then once we found the, our spiritual self, we started to explore it differently. And we understood that the love that we were taught didn't work anymore, so how can we recreate that? And I'll not go into all of that, but until, think about this. Your lives are going along right now as is. Am I correct? And nothing's going to change in your life right now. You're going to, you have to accept where you are. That's loving yourself. I accept where my life is right now, where it is. But until you make a mental shift in your life, it's not going to change. You have to make a mental shift. You have to change the mental atmosphere that surrounds you. In other words, the thoughts that you have, the unconscious, conscious thoughts, create a mental atmosphere. That mental atmosphere is the power that creates. That is the Christ within. Jesus said so clearly, it is done unto you as you believe. And he made it very clear, it is not the Father it is not I, but it is the Father that is doing it. He was talking about the universal power within everyone. And he made it, came across and he said, it, this I do, you can do and more. So he was saying, I'm not your power. You have the power here. I'm showing you the way to tap into your power. And when you change your belief, the power that is in you responds. So in order to change your belief, you have to think new. You have to create a new mental atmosphere. Does that make sense? See, Jesus was really practical. But we've taken Jesus and we put him on this pedestal and made him unapproachable. That's not who Jesus was. Jesus was a Jew who came down to make the life better for the Jewish people and the Gentiles. He came to not to create a religion. Mankind created a religion. He came to make everyone up. That's what love is about, everyone. So when people talk about the idea of what is agape, agape is not a, di a community with diversity. Agape is an inclusive community that only recognizes that everyone is the divine essence of God right now, and we're going to honor that no matter how we look, speak, talk, walk, and burp. Okay, so I really got off. So that's, that's my love aspect of today. So I'm going to get into a little the next point. Lesson number two in life, self-care. So much of the time, we get off on doing so much else for others that we forget our own self-care. Self-care is about taking time every morning 
to center yourself and determine what your day is going to be. Self-care is about going into the stillness, being quiet and listening to what does the higher self want to speak. Self-care is about doing whatever it is, affirmations, prayer, mantras, whatever it might be, to change your mental image so when you change your mental image and your mental atmosphere, you begin to create anew. You're honoring the power within you to go out and become more. Self-care is about taking in only food and water and drink that supports nurturing a loving and healthy body. Self-care is honoring that before you spend money, you ask yourself, is this money being spent toward things that are of my highest value? We had a great class yesterday, 16 magnificent people on creating your life vision. We went from nine to five, and the idea that came out in this class was simply this. Some people want to say, I, wealth is, being wealthy is one of my, my top values, but they have nothing in the bank. But yet, they're buying two Starbucks a day. So their value is not being wealthy, their value is buying two Starbucks a day. Is that clear? Because it's not what you say that's your value, it's what you do that's your value. So let's look at the Starbucks. So Starbucks, let's just round it around, five bucks a pop, right? You're buying two a day, you got 10 bucks. If you invest $10 every day in an S&P 500 index fund over 20 years, you will be a multi-multi-millionaire. But until you identify that wealth is it, you create a mental atmosphere and intention, you're going to buy your Starbucks, you're going to get the joy out of drinking a Starbucks, but you're not going to be wealthy. So we've got to stop fooling ourselves and understanding that what we do is a reflection of what we value and is it really what we want. Self-care means you are consciously living to your highest values to create your perfect life, and you really don't give a flip what anyone else says. You see, because remember, we're in a society that's influenced by what? Mass media, mass marketing. We're influenced by what the schools project, the churches project, by what the magazines project. Here's the biggest thing that screws up everything is the images in magazines about what a model man looks like, Thank you, I'm it. <laughs> I'm joking. And what a model woman looks like. And we try to meet these definitions. Okay, if I stood all of you up and we did a photograph and put them all next to there, there are no two people in this room anywhere near built the same and they could never possibly be built the same. So why would we try to aspire to be something that's totally impossible? instead of just becoming the perfect us and saying that's all that's necessary, a body that fully functions in this planet that allows us to experience our senses to the fullness and do the work that we've come to do and joy. You see, where self-care is important and it affects every aspect of our lives and you can't care for someone else, you can't be caring for someone else until you care for yourself. Lesson number three, forgiveness. Forgiveness of self and others. And forgiveness is not that someone does anything to you because no one ever does anything to you. People only do things for themselves. We are a very selfish human race. The basis of everything we do is for our own pleasure or for the avoidance of pain. We're not doing it to someone. That's not the case. You will find that in any type of situation, no matter what the instance, and this is something that I explored deeply with Dr. John D. Martini, and when he breaks it down in all the studies of all the people, when he looks at murderers and rapists, and you name the worst kind of people that we would designate in the world, they never did it to a victim. They did it for themselves, for what they were going to get out of it. The same thing with a terrorist. The terrorist is not doing something. They're doing it for themselves based on what are they going to get from doing it. They're going to get a, go up to heaven and have 70 virgins. Whew. 70 virgins. That keep you up at night. I don't know if that would inspire anyone, but it does for some reason inspire some. I know my sense of humor doesn't get everyone, but some people do laugh. And the most important thing is that I laugh, and so there you go. That's self-care. Um, forgiveness is not about making it right what happened. Forgiveness about, is about seeing that there is balance in life. So I'll use the example when my mother passed. 
The second my mother passed, there was a huge void in my mind. But in reality, in that very moment, all these other people stepped up and filled the void. All I had to do was become aware. The second, let's say there's a divorce. The second a divorce happens, or we're asked for a divorce, whatever support that the person who's divorcing us gave us, immediately other people in our mind will step forward and fill that void. But we have to become aware that that's there. You see, the universe does not, cannot tolerate a vacuum. There is never a vacuum anywhere. It's only in our awareness that we do not see that there is a balance. Okay? Forgiveness is the greatest, greatest thing you can do for yourself because without forgiveness, you can never live in the present moment. Without forgiveness, you're always going to be living, reliving the past, reliving the past, reliving the past, reliving the past. And when someone comes to your mind and it causes your face to pucker, they own you. You are no longer free. That person has all the power over you. And you can do it. I can talk to people who have, who's been, have gone through a divorce, and I'll mention the name of the spouse that left them, and all of a sudden, <laughs> they're owned. They're owned until you let that go, until you can see the benefits that happened as a result of the separation and that. You're owned. Because remember, people don't do it to you. They only do it for yourself. And once you can see that, you don't have to have the attachment to the event anymore. The last one is self-awareness. This is about coming into the realization that you have the power in you to do, to create, and to experience whatever you choose. This is what spiritual practice is all about. It's about doing the meditation, the affirmations, the prayer, the visioning, the visualization, the forgiveness, the, the gratitude work, so that you create the mental atmosphere. This is so clear to me that I've been saying it over and over in classes and some of my thoughts are saying it. I am not responsible for the power that creates. But the power that creates is in me, outside of me, and is creating for me. I am not responsible for creation. But I am 100% responsible for my beliefs. So you see, that's the co-creative process right there. There is an infinite power and presence. We call the law. We call it the divine feminine that is within us that is always creating. It never stops creating. So you can't turn this power off because this power is so tuned in that it takes whatever the belief structure is over here and it makes it your life now. So the power that you have is you can't turn off this power, but you can change your belief. And as you change your belief, this power automatically, without judgment, responds to you. Is that not the coolest thing? Think about how cool that is. I don't have to think about the how. I've only got to develop the belief. Now remember this, when you develop a belief, it's not only the thoughts you keep thinking, but it's the words that are in alignment with the thoughts, followed by the actions that are in alignment with the thoughts, followed by the most important thing. This is the feminine side, guys. Listen to this. you got to feel it. you got to have feeling in it. When you're thinking the thoughts of the new you, you got to feel what it's like. When you speak it, people got to know, yeah, there's juice there. You got to know there's juice there. And when you're act, you're not acting, uh, you're acting, yeah, I've got it. That's inspiration from within. When you're coming from within, that's inspiration. It's what your divine wants to express and to experience. When you have to be motivated from the outside, you don't value it because it's not your highest value. If you're motivated from the outside, you will never achieve the results you want in that area. It's got to come from within. Does that make sense? Close your eyes with me. And I'm going to ask you, to do something at a deeper level 
than you've done in a while. And that is to imagine. I want you to take a look at yourself in the mirror in your mind and imagine yourself living in a body that is fully functional, that gives you freedom of movement, gives you endurance, gives you strength, that allows you to do everything that you desire. Your body, no one else's. And as you behold that body, bless it, call it good. I want you now to again imagine and see yourself surrounded by loving and caring relationships. Relationships where, that are supportive and promoting growth for you and the other person. I want you to imagine relationships where there is no judgment, there is acceptance. In the feeling of that, bless it and bless yourself. I want you now to imagine a deep connection to life, to love, to peace, to joy, to beauty. I want you to feel it. Let every cell of your body open and feel. Visualize your heart center no longer encapsulated with all the scar tissue of the past, but now releasing that scar tissue. Any hurt that might have happened now falls away, and your heart is wide open. And feel the love being received into that heart and now being emitted back out from that heart. Bless that feeling. I want you now to imagine that you are living your perfect, abundant life. You have the perfect place to live, the perfect transportation, you have the perfect job, you have the perfect amount of money that gives you the financial freedom to do what you want, when you want, and how you want. You are debt free. You are free. Feel that. Now bless it. In your mind right now, take just a moment and start giving thanks for all that is valuable to you. Give thanks for your mother, give thanks for your grandmother, give thanks for your father, your grandfather, give thanks for your children, give thanks for your life, your job, give thanks for the money that you have, give thanks for the ability to see life beyond the present moment. Start to embody the idea that you are no longer limited but you are now lifted to a higher sense of consciousness where there is no limitation. You are unbound, you are free, and you are now molding your mind to the mind that you desire, which you know will now attract to you. Knowing that that power is in you, bless that power, bless your life because it has given you everything you need to be at this moment where you now claim your power, you move forward in that power, and your life and the world is now changed. Now in that gratitude, you come forth in the world today and you bless the world. And now with one voice, you affirm it by simply saying, and so it is, amen. 
I want to thank you for joining us today. I'm so grateful that you took your time to watch or listen to this message. If you found this message beneficial, I would ask that you go to our website, agapecsl.com. Once there, click on the donate button and experience the joy of conscious and purposeful giving. Or if you would like, text your gift by simply dialing 972-532-6976. It is through your gifts that we are able to bring this message to you in the world. I would ask that if you like this message, to please subscribe to my YouTube channel under my name, Lee Wallach. Again, I want to thank you for joining me in the Gopi community as we learn how to better self-love through conscious living.